Hello, Java students, and welcome to Chunk 1, Module 3, Java Variables, Operators, and If Controlled Blocks. This is a screencast that will guide you through exercise 0. Remember, computers start counting at 0, so our exercises start at 0. We are familiarizing ourselves with the essential operators in Java. So notice how I got here. This is the Chunk 1, Module 3. Uh, guide and so on our home page it is located under Java module 3 make sure that you have set up your work environment we should have a you should have a, uh, a project called CIT 100 online courses with a week 3 package and uh, you can create the variables class uh, which we'll walk through uh, in the uh, core concepts Okay, so you should already have variables, and now we are going to jump into exercise zero. All right, now exercise zero is based on the Oracle tutorials. These are linked constantly throughout our course, and they're linked to or we link to Oracle because Oracle is the the um, the uh, the shepherd of the Java language. They are a major two hundred pound gorilla corporation, and they also have quite a a solid coding ethic. So they have created a Java specification and supported people developing free and open source Java implementations. And so their tutorials are the foundation for a lot of other tutorials that are based in Java. So if we click on either these links to these pages or the actual uh, screenshot, we'll jump into the tutorials. Notice this is in the language basics section so you can always navigate in here we are looking at operators this is the overview and we are going to work through together the this first section called assignment arithmetic and unary operators I'm gonna do this little short screencast to demonstrate how I would suggest working through the Oracle tutorials because I'll be linking these throughout the course and I will not necessarily record screencasts of each one I want you to be familiar with my intention in assigning these so that you can make the most of them. The Oracle tutorials will give you complete classes and we want to duplicate those classes in our NetBeans environment so that we can correspond our work with theirs. So I notice that their class is called Arithmetic Demo. So I'm going to come into NetBeans and I'm going to right click on my package and I'm going to add a new Java class. I need this Java class name to be exactly identical to the Oracle's class, so I can copy it and actually paste it into my NetBeans here. So when I finish, I have a class called Arithmetic Demo, and I can work on transferring this code from here to my NetBeans and tinkering along the way. It's critical that as you work through these examples that you realize my intention is not for you to copy. Copying doesn't help your brain, but um, systematically uh, comprehending, or we could say digesting, the sample code is a critical way that you can learn Java as a new programmer. And so I want to show you how I might do that. And I'm going to set up my workspace like you should, which is we want to have Oracle Tutorial visible and NetBeans visible at the same time so that we don't have to click back and forth. I'm going to zoom in here so I can see the code nice and clearly and so can you. And I'm just going to work through a couple of these blocks and then uh, turn the baton over to you to do your thing. The purpose of their class is to demonstrate how these various uh, binary operators work. Now when I say binary that means that they are going to operate on two different variable uh, types. They are, are two different variable values. Uh, so this is not rocket science here. We have a lot of our basic mathematical operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and the programmer's favorite, the remainder operator or the modulus operator. So let me uh, do this coding with you. So I've got a class. They have a main method and I need to have that. So public static void main. Remember main methods are the entry point for these uh, Java applications where they start running. And I'm going to label my closing curly braces. So this is end main and email. End main 
and this is uh, our close class and I'm going to use consistent terms close main all right so let's see what they've got going they set up a variable of type int and they name it result now they store in that result two literal integer values the literal one and they add it to the literal two remember that assignment operators take what's on the right and they store it on the variable on the left so this is not an equality test we aren't saying result is equal to one plus two we are saying that the value on the right is stored on the value on the left notice from our uh, overview uh, notice from the core concepts that we are declaring the result variable as type int meaning it can only store integers and once I've declared it I give it an initial value that's calculated as 1 plus 2 stored in result and they comment that result is now 3 great not 3 it's now 3 and I can even comment before so demonstrate addition operator the more you can ask your brain to process this data the better you will understand it now the next thing that they do is we print out the result or we print out the value of the variable result we do that with a system.out.println method and they are once again combining the string literal and a variable lookup so let's just be clear we are typing in the operation 1 plus 2 equals this is a little bit deceptive because we're using we're writing out a mathematical equation using the math sense of equals but we used equals in the programming sense of assignment here programming is very subtle we have to think about every little character we can't take them for granted the compiler doesn't skip over stuff it doesn't get bored and say eh, I'm not gonna worry about that little equal sign everything is important and uh, that's why I'm taking it slow here so we can not make any mistakes as we see we can we have something that we can demonstrate with our output now so I can do a control s for this file to save it you'll notice that I have a green right triangle which means the compiler is happy with what I have written and I can run it with shift f6 so here's our output it printed out this remember this is not something that the compiler is treating as math this was literal text that I printed out to show us in the output that the operation was successful because that is the expected outcome of adding one and two the next thing that it does the tutorial is it creates a new variable called original underscore result and stores in it the value of result so remember result is carried through each line and every time the compiler sees the variable result it goes to memory and it looks up its current value so this is our assignment statement meaning it ends with a semicolon it looks up the value of result first on the right then it's going to store it in original result this is a new variable we declare it as an integer we give it a name and then we immediately store a value in it and that's whatever the value of result was and our next line it, our next chunk of text is going to overwrite our result value so we have result minus one again this may seem a little bit odd we have to think about it in steps the compiler evaluates meaning it computes everything on the right side of the equal sign it must resolve down to an integer type because we are storing what's on the right in the variable on the left and this is a integer type now let's imagine that I tried typing 1.89 I get a flag incompatible types possible lossy conversion from double to int 1.89 as we learned in our core concepts is a double value meaning it has a decimal point the word double is a little bit misleading to beginner programmers it doesn't have anything to do with the idea of of doubling or multiplying something by two it has to do with the fact that it's taking up twice the space of a float type which is a 
ver uh, value with a decimal point, but it's twice as large, so it can store very high precision numbers. And so we're looking up result, which as of this line, result is 3. And if I try to subtract 1.89, this is no good because I can't store. If I take 3 minus 1.89, I get a number with a decimal point. I can't store decimals in integer types. I can only store integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's why we get a red uh, highlight because it's not respecting the type rules of Java. So I've just demonstrated the use of the minus operator, stored that result in the result variable, meaning I have overridden, I've overridden, written the value of result which was previously 3. And so as our tutorial has us do, we note that result is now 2. Our result of 3, value 3 is gone. And then I can print it out. Notice that we are doing original result. plus hmm and then we say original result equals result the reason i wanted to walk through this is oracle is is uh this is potentially a little bit confusing <laughs> we are mixing several uses of our operators so let's go ahead and actually run this and then we can talk about it together okay I'm g what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this below okay this is great so our codes up here our outputs down here so we can uh, digest this a little bit I didn't even type that right original result minus one plus result. Where is this coming from? So 3, oh, I did not um, I did not type this correctly. Uh, minus 1 equals plus result. All right, there we go. Let's digest how this line got printed. We send to the print line method everything in these parentheses. We've got several things going on here. So when it sees original result, it goes to the memory and looks up what is original results value. Well, it was last changed on line number 31. And that's this case, original result was given the value of result 3. So I'm sending this to print line. That's where this 3 came from. It looked up original result and sent it in. This plus sign is not adding anything. This plus sign is a use of the uh, plus as a concatenation operator, which means it is asking the compiler to squish together, not do math, but squish together the value of original result with this text literal, meaning space minus sign, space one, space equal sign, space. That's what this is. See, all of this came from in here. And then this plus sign means squish together, or look up the value of result, which was whatever result was subtracted from one, then we store it in result and uh, then display that. So that's where this 2 came from, was it looked up result and printed it out. The reason we are doing this particular type of string output is because we want the output to be pretty. Okay, now if I go ahead and I can just take out, if I take out all of this, the more confusing stuff, I can just ship result out. See, number 2. You might even start with that. So as you're working through these tutorials, you gotta stop. You gotta slow down, and you've gotta digest every single character and ask, what is it doing? Use your output. You're constantly connecting output 
with what your code did. That's how you're going to learn Java, is seeing how did the compiler interpret what I typed into various components of the code. So as you go through this, you're going to get in the habit of debugging our string concatenation operators with our math operators. Again, just to reiterate, we use the plus sign as a mathematical operator up here. We're using the plus sign inside the calls to print line as string concatenation operators. Remember, it, it can't do any math on an integer type variable and then this string. It doesn't make sense to add the original result of 3 to a text. The compiler knows this, and so it's not going to treat this mathematically. It's going to treat it as a, let's squish together these values and send them to the console so the user can see them. As you go through, keep that in mind. And it would be good to, uh, if you're feeling confident with the code as it's printed in the tutorial, you can even go ahead and, and start changing the names. For example, I can practice refactoring result by going to refactor and say um, my own variable result. So I'm renaming it. So it went through and changed every instance of that variable. So this allows you to take baby steps into making code look exactly the way it is in the tutorial and then customizing it for your own purposes. So continue going through this and uh, notice how each of the operators works. Paying particular attention to the result modulo 7, which takes uh, the result divides it by 7, and the, this, the outcome of that operator is whatever is left over. It's the remainder operator. You're going to go through and uh, try the string concatenation. This shows you how the uh, plus operator is working as a string concatenator. It already had you do that up here. It's explaining it down here, so the order is a little bit odd. It'll walk you through unary operators, which are operators that do not require two values. Unary un means one, so those are operators that only need one value to carry out an, an action. All right, with that, have fun with the Oracle tutorials. I'm going to ask you to go through this first section and then equality and relational operators. The bitwise and shift operators are more advanced and they are using, uh, they're actually digging down into the bit level, the ones and zeros of the operating system and the Java virtual machine, which is a very interesting topic and I encourage you to spend some time on it if you are so inclined, but I'm not requiring or not asking you to do that for this course. All right. Good luck and have fun.